Hello, welcome to Zanzi Oz Diary. My name is Connie. If you're new here, you're very much welcome. So uh, today's video, I'm just going to examine this Candice Owen burn. I just wanted to be to just have a look at it and see the reason why she was banned and and also to make my own decision about what are the facts of these matters. So we're gonna watch a couple of videos and then Candice Owen will speak and I'll give you guys my final thoughts about it, okay? to hear he said her faux sophistication on these particular issues has been ridiculous everyone can see the moves she's making the things that she's saying and i find them disreputable now here are some of the things candace owens has in fact been saying recently as she seems to throw her support behind gop presidential hopeful <laughs> nikki haley ironically not for the president of the united states well i am here today to endorse nikki haley for president of israel i think she's earned that I think Bibi Netanyahu is going through a very bad time right now. Support for Israel has virtually collapsed socially. If you're paying attention to the trends and you're paying attention to what people are watching, you're paying attention to the protests. And the one person that I think is capable of getting it back is Nikki Haley with a, enough money from foreign interest lobbies. So there it is, guys. I'm endorsing Nikki Haley, president of Israel. All right, she's clearly being tongue in cheek there, but the feud happening um, over uh, there is on the right is not um, a joke. Apparently, shortly after the Ben Shapiro tweet started to gain traction, uh, Candace Owens didn't respond directly, but she put out a tweet that many people are reading as a subtweet, as it were, where she says, "Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they uh, which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven." Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you, yada, 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 obviously saying that she's implying that she's rising above all of the uh, negativity that's coming. I saw the video when everybody else saw it when I woke up. Um, no, one, he, no one warned you about it. Nobody warned me about it. I, I, it looks like maybe he didn't know he was being recorded. It looks yes. like it was some sort of a private event. I got no clarity on the issue that he was particularly speaking on and in what was said. I also, I can't respond to it beyond what he's saying because it's just ad hominem attacks. I don't know. Yeah, because it's not, you know, we disagree or yeah. I, you know, I, I don't think she's correct or maybe she doesn't know what she's talking about. It's absolutely disgraceful. Yeah, exactly. And so I can't respond to it on a level of intellect because there, there's nothing that he has expressed in that, at least in that short clip that he fundamentally disagrees with in terms of what I said. But I will say that. I'm not going to respond with the same ad hominem attacks. Yes. I don't think it helps further discussion. And it, if I, that was me that was caught on a video saying that about colleagues that I work with, I would be embarrassed. I would. So I think that the video speaks more to Ben's character than it speaks to mine. Has he texted you to apologize or explain or anything? No. What tends to happen is, of course, we, we all have elements of selfishness within us. And so when it particularly pertains to an issue that impacts you, I... I was strongly speaking out against Black Lives Matter as an organization very early on as a conservative because I understood what the implications were going to be of defunding yes. the police. Right. It was an issue that was important to me. I created an entire documentary to talk about this issue. Yes. And I held on for a long time and people began to see that actually I was telling the truth and now we have more death in inner city communities than we had before. Yes. Um, these, these riots and these George Floyd protests calling for defunding of the police. And I think in terms of this, that's what's also happened is that people that are pro-Israel are pro Israel, a lot of them, because they have family members in hey, Israel. I get it. They I have get homes it. in yes, Israel. Yes. And so they feel very attached to this issue. And, you know, I was very happy to host somebody who was pro Israel. He's a pro Israel comedian on my show the other day. And I explained this to him. I said, you know, you are demanding that we have this same response that you are having about what people are saying on college campuses. The rhetoric on college campuses hasn't changed. Did you not remember what they were saying, what professors were saying? the anti-white explicit racism that was happening and not even just allowed in terms of student protests, but was written into the curriculum. So I actually think uh, that was very illuminating. She called out Ben also on Twitter. Actually, well, I guess it, it depends. Who do you think struck first? I, I'm going to say Ben struck first. Candace then responded uh, where she put out, I think it was a quote from scripture where she talked about like, blessed be the peacekeepers because that's really, she's had a different uh, view of all this. Let's put that up there on the screen. That was her initial response that came after 
the video that came out. She says, you cannot serve both God and money. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. Now let's put the response, please, up there on the screen. Ben Shapiro then last night, shortly before the Tucker Carlson uh, clip debuted, says, Candace, if you feel that taking money from the Daily Wire somehow comes between you and God, by all means, quit. And then, let's put this up there, she went ahead and responded, and she says, you are utterly out of line for suggesting I cannot quote biblical strip scripture. The Bible is not about you. Mm -hmm. She also, Crystal, responded um, to Shapiro, where she said that his behavior had been unhinged and unprofessional over the last few weeks, and that the rest of the Daily Wire crew um, all had to grapple with that. So uh, I'll just put my allegiances and make them very clear. I'm Team Candace here um, for a variety of reasons. Number one is Shapiro owns half, was a portion of the Daily Wire. You. So now let's have a listen at Candace Owen herself, and she's going to describe the chronological event, what happened that led to uh, this hit piece. Uh, uh, sanctioned by a certain government and in ensuring that she, everyone doesn't want to work with her and subsequently a negative um, stuff about her. Just really, in, yeah, suddenly the change was a lot of hit piece being created by following after a certain event and she will explain to you all. And now we are here in Australia where she's now being banned from coming to Australia on actually pre-book tour, so meaning banning all of us from actually listening to her views. Okay, so as you can see, most people who were saying, and in that last video, uh, from the right side saying they were for the freedom of speech, I wonder if that freedom, freedom of speech is limited to a certain group of people, white people, not for black people. That freedom is that freedom of speech has a category, a race element to it. So I'm just a bit confused about it. But, you know, let's listen in to her explaining um, her situation about what happened to her. Okay the media is upset because I don't have a handler, so to speak. So I want to talk to you guys today. You know, I've given you my book list on locals of what everybody should be reading. But in terms of what's happening right now on social media, it is such a teaching moment. And I want to speak to you guys about really what is pedophile philosophy and what is also pedophile psychology. And I say this uh, because I have read this incredible book. If you were uh, one of the million point five people that have watched the X space that I did with the Tate brothers and Dan Bilzerian, you'll know that I mentioned this book that's on my list, which every single person must read. Bear with me if you heard this spiel on it. But the book is entitled The Assault on Truth. That is what's happening right now in this world, The Assault on Truth. And it is written by a Jewish man. It's important that he is Jewish. His name is Jeffrey Masson. I believe he's Australian, actually. Like I said, he essentially his backstory is he graduated Harvard and he was a psychoanalyst, got involved with the Sigmund Freud Archive Center and really hit it off with Sigmund Freud's daughter, Anna. And she had decided to select him to be the director. And like, you know, the next up, you're going to be the director of this amazing archive center. You're going to have access to all the Sigmund Freud files. We start crawling through these files and realizes, you know what, I should learn to speak German. And so I can understand like what, what, what all these notes are from Sigmund Freud. And when he did that, he learned German and he went through the notes. He realized that Sigmund Freud um, was covering for pedophiles extensively. Like he could not believe that Sigmund Freud was covering for pedophiles. And this explains this big pivot that Sigmund Freud had. At first, when Sigmund Freud went out to Vienna, he was meeting with all of these Jewish women who were saying that they were raped by their fathers. And when these women, who were obviously victims, they were adults, but they said they were raped when they were children, he found their allegations to be credible. And it was thanks in large part, he said, to how they were reacting when they were telling the story. He could sense that it was a real trauma. And he wrote about this and he released a paper. And then all of his friends, all of his psycho psychiatrist friends at this Vienna Institute of Psychology basically rejected him for having produced this theory. And they did a complete 180 and he said, never mind, people that say that they are raped by their parents 
are in fact suffering from some various unknown uh, attraction to their parents. So actually uh, the child is attracted to their father really horrific. So this guy comes across this and realizes that psychoanalysis was created as a way to quite literally systemically gaslight people who were raped. And he knew, Sigmund Freud knew they were being raped. He actually speaks in this book about how he even went down to the morgue and was able to see the bodies of some children who were raped and who were murdered, like a super heavy topic. But he, despite this, did this complete 180. And so this book, when he did this and he read the archive, Jeffrey was like, this, obviously the psychiatric, the psychoanalysis community is going to thank me so much for having released this. And boy, oh boy, was he wrong. I just want to read you this directly from the book in terms of what happened when he tried to tell the truth, because as I said, it is a lesson in terms of what is happening right now. He said, the negative response to my paper alerted me to the political overtones of my research. The truth or falsity of my research was not questioned, only the wisdom of having made the material available to the public. When a series of articles in the New York Times in August of 1981 reported on my findings, the resulting wave of protests culminated in a demand for my removal from the archives. I was dismissed to the evident relief of the analytic community. The reason offered was that I had shown poor judgment in expressing opinions before a non-professional audience. So this guy literally lost his job for having revealed something that he thought people would go, oh my gosh, thank goodness you revealed this. And obviously we need to realize that psychoanalysis is really just gaslighting, right? And so what's really interesting now, because I've read this book and I'm learning more about the fraud that Sigmund Freud actually was, honestly, in the future, I think people will call him Sigmund Fraud. Um, I'm very aware now of these media tactics. I'm very aware when the media, when you say something that is a truth, they just assault you and they don't actually debunk anything that you've said. And this is essentially what has happened to me over the last 48 hours. It's incredible. They, they're giving me what I refer to as the wacko jacko treatment, right? Because this is their thing. They could, they say to the woman, you're crazy, not actually, you're not actually telling the truth. And so I just want to remind you, by the way, the wacko jacko thing, here's um, some headlines of what they did to Michael Jackson um, when he went up against Sony and he was winning against Sony. They suddenly came out out and said, wacko, jacko, backo. Look at jacko, sex raid, jacko on a taco, wacko, jacko. We all remember this. And we all believed it, of course, because it's hard for us to imagine that the media would tell a lie this strong and this passionately and label somebody crazy simply because they were protecting their reputation or simply trying to reveal a certain truth. But this has been going on since a pedophile, which Sigmund Freud was, created this system of psychoanalysis. So I actually call this now pedopsychology. When people do this as opposed to responding to what you're saying or refuting your claims, when they just go out and start calling you names or calling you crazy, it's just pedophile psychology. Just call it pedopsych. So what actually happened? What did what was the hornet's nest that I actually kicked? Well, over the weekend, the ADL decided to issue a tweet celebrating a dead pedophile and murderer. Uh, that individual's name, and I can show you that tweet, his name uh, was Leo Frank. They tweeted this, tomorrow marks 109 years since Leo Frank was lynched by a hate field mob in Georgia after being falsely accused and unjustly convicted of murder in a trial marred by anti-Semitism. And he, they then lie and said that he was finally pardoned in 1986. And they lie only in that it signals to the public that he was not actually a pedophile, that he was not actually convicted for pedophilia and murder. The reality is, is that after 80 years of thuggery, the AD, ADL got uh, some governor in Atlanta to say, okay, well, we'll pardon him. Okay, so they're not saying that he's not guilty, but they're basically saying that he's not alive and he can't appeal the decision. That took 80 years of thuggery, but they refused to say that he was not guilty because the evidence was so overwhelming. And so I was so upset about this because it was a young Catholic girl that was murdered, Mary Fagan. And here is a picture of Mary Fagan. She was 13 years old. Uh, the power dynamic there was that Leo Frank was her boss. He ran the um, pencil factory that she worked at and she was a low wage employee. She was very poor. And all of the girls testified against him, said that he was super creepy and that he was unbelievably wealthy and he related to banking families in America and overseas. And so I started speaking about this issue, very frustrated at the fact that the ADL was actually born to defend a pedophile, right? 
And this is the ADL that has a ton of power in our government. This is the ADL that is constantly tweeting at people, calling them anti-Semitic all the time. They launched their entire organization because previously to being the ADL, they were B'nai B'rith, which was a, a Freemason um, organization in America. And then they created the ADL to defend Leo Frank. This is a part of their legacy and they can't get rid of it. And that is why people were going wild on Twitter when they had the audacity to tweet this and to pretend that this very guilty man was in fact not guilty. And I started to do a live on that because I am so frustrated with the fact that there are examples of clear-cut pedophilia. And you will see this weird thing where people will defend it because they have been so abused by the media into believing that if they don't defend it, well, what's going to happen? No, what happened to him was an act of anti-Semitism. No, it was not. Like that is, it was nothing to do with anti-Semitism. In fact, when he was convicted, two of the judges, and they all convicted him, not a single person found him not to be not guilty. That's how overwhelming the evidence was. But two of the jury members, pardon, uh, uh, two of the jury members were actually Jewish. So it's a nonsense. It's just been a propaganda campaign for decades to try to effectively men in black society, just like, phew, Yo, know, memory way, uh, erased, and we're going to create the new future. And so I did this live speaking about that and how, you know, we have to be brave in the face of pedophilia. Like, I am a mother, and you should never feel that because of your identity, like I should never feel that I have to stand up and defend a drug dealer. I don't, I, I don't, a drug addict, I don't, on the basis of the fact that they have the same complexion as me. You know that because think about the firestorm that I went through when I stood up against the George Floyd narrative and people were going, Candace, that could be you, that could be your children, you're black. I said, no, I reject that narrative. You know, the things that he did in his past are contemptible, and I am not going to allow this person to become an idol in the future. The same thing should apply to Jewish America. You do not have to defend criminals. You do not have to defend pedophiles. You do not have to defend any person across the world on the basis of somebody trying to basically pigeonhole you into your identity. But then I offered a little more information, and this is, this is really important, speaking further to that. First and foremost is the, the fact that Israel, as an example, for people that feel this pull to defend this country on the basis of the fact that you're Jewish, Israel right now is a safe haven for pedophiles, okay? I don't care where you stand on any political issue, if you're a Democrat or Republican, we should all be outraged that we are sending our dollars overseas to a country that is protecting pedophiles. So we're talking about men like Leo Frank who rape little girls, know that they can go, if they're Jewish, they can go to Israel and they'll be provided a safe haven. And I'm going to show you two articles that are going to substantiate that claim because people will say, what are you talking? No, it's 1000% true. Here is an article, CBS News, how Jewish American pedophiles hide from justice in Israel. Here's another article. Uh, the Jerusalem Post, tens of thousands of pedophiles operate in Israel every year. So what we all should be agreeing on sensibly is that that is wrong. We should all be on the same team when it comes to standing up to pedophilia. And so what happened thereafter, I did this live and I then took it a step further by confirming to people that the problem here is that there is a religious cult that is known as Frankism, okay? You can look this up, look up Jacob Frank and Frankism, they pretend to be Jews. They are not Jews, okay? They practice incest and pedophilia as a sacramental rite. I brought to my audience the fact, the indisputable fact, the fact that I learned from Gershom Sholem, an Israeli historian, that Leo Frank, just so you guys know, is a descendant, a direct descendant of Jacob Frank. So it is very likely that Leo Frank was not a Jew, okay? This is not a person who followed the Torah. Leo Frank was very likely a Frankist. It is a fact that Frankists made it to America. You can look up Louis Brandeis, the Supreme Court justice, who they say, the first Jewish Supreme... No, he was a Frankist. Check out his Wikipedia. He kept a picture of Ava Frank, Jacob Frank's daughter, who he committed incest with, who he had sex with, um, a, a, a picture of Ava Frank on his desk. You can research this. So the issue that we have are people who are satanic have infiltrated all of the faiths. I have been talking about this on this podcast. And so after saying this and calling upon people to stand up 
to pedophiles, to stand up to what I believe is an, an operation of Frankists and sickos who are using this sort of pedo psychology to get people upset and to gaslight people for getting when they start to recognize this truth. Um, when I made that call and said, hey, guys, we need to stand up to this, I was smeared and I was lied to. A group known as Jewish on Campus, who, by the way, I should mention, have ties to Louis Brandeis's Human Rights Center. I don't know how you could be a person that is a Frankist who also has a Human Rights Center named after you, which is shocking to me. They wrote this on Instagram, just straight up told a lie about what I said in that live. They, they accused me of claiming that Judaism Judaism. This week on the Candace Owen show, that's not even a show anymore. The Candace Owen show claimed in a widely anti-Semitic statement that Judaism is a pedophile centric religion that worships Baphomet, believes in demons and child sacrifice, and is the reason that we have the circumstances that we are in today. I never said this. This, this is just when I, this is like just full on make up a lie. Any, and that's why they didn't include the clip. I commented and said, take this down. They did not take it down. So I had to get my lawyer to send them a cease and assist. And then they took it down. But of course, by then the damage is done. People start tagging. They believe this because everyone looks on the internet and they just accept that. Why would anybody lie? Why would anybody lie? Candace must have gone on there and said, Judaism is for pedophiles. Of course, I didn't say that. Why would, why would I say that? What is the Torah? I am a Christian. Aren't those books in my Bible? But they do this because they know that they can seize people by this fearfulness. And it, that, that fearfulness comes from what we are conditioned in school to believe is a threat to our existence. So for black people, it's slavery. For Jewish people, it's the Holocaust. And so what can happen is that before you know it, you're defending something. You don't even know what it is that you're defending, right? There is nobody watching this show that disagrees, I hope, other than maybe Frankists that disagrees with the fact that any nation that we are giving money to should not have a right to harbor pedophiles. That is a sensible position to have. It is the, not only sensible, it is a righteous position to have. So why did they try to smear me for that? And so what then happened, of course, is, and I am very clear on this, like I can give you tons of reasons, but number one, if you defend pedophiles, I cannot support you. I cannot support you. I cannot support anything that you're doing. It'd be very simple for you to let us extradite our pedophiles and to not give them a haven. I can't imagine being uh, a parent of somebody whose child was raped at the age of seven, and you find out that the person who raped your child is in a country that you have to give tax dollars to, and you can't access that person. You know that's wrong. I know that's wrong. It is okay to stand up to pedophilia. So anyways, what happened was since I like exposed that there's a Frankist cult that has infiltrated all of the faiths, and that is a fact, an absolute fact, and because they can't dispute the facts, they just go with, Candace is crazy. I'm not kidding. They started saying that I was having some sort of a mental breakdown, trying to pretend that I said this about Judaism, and you had all sorts of people condemning something that I never said or frankly, not even saying what I said, because it's easier that way if you're just super dramatic, like Sarah Carter, who is somebody who, I don't know, does some stuff for Fox News. She, she starts with, I'm not kidding, this is her tweet, my statement on at real Candace Owens. I've known Candace for some time and admired her work on Blexit and as a valued voice in the conservative movement. Let me stop you right there. I do not know Sarah. <laughs> I've met Sarah many moons ago, but just to be clear, I've had three, I haven't even seen her since before I was married and had children. That's how long ago it's been since I've known Sarah, but she's doing this because she thinks that it's going to wait the statement and because somebody has told her to do this because what's likely happening right now is that people that do protect pedophiles are going to do that by making people who don't protect pedophiles be outraged by a statement that they don't even disagree with. She then wrote, sadly, something seems to have gone wrong so that she is now engaging in and spreading the most vile and vicious Jew-hating conspiracy theories, some of them dating back to the depths of ignorance from the Middle Ages. Again, she has not presented what it was is that I said that was wrong. She has not presented anything. She's not refuting a point because as Jeffrey Masson has pointed out in this book, it's not about refutation. It's about simply smearing, about simply libeling, and then being angry that the person presented a truth that they don't want the public to be aware of. 
Then they got even crazier, right? So then they, they started to like, you know, she, she just needs to check into rehab. She needs to take a break. Like she's she, wacko jacko status. And of course, that's never going to sell. It's just not going to sell. It worked on Michael Jackson. It worked on Kanye. It's just not going to work. I have a five day a week show. If I'm in some sort of a psychosis, the first people to recognize that would likely be the listeners of the show. They would see that. I'm a mother with three children. The show is running every single day. They're not going to buy this, but they sure are going to try to sell it. And so now they start to the pedopsychology, like just trying to basically say, I have to analyze her psychosis. This guy writes this, Candace Owens admits her mom was a drunk and hence she probably has fetal alcohol syndrome, explains her small frontal head, absent nasal bridge and her wide spaced eyes. Her mom is Angela Owens. Well, I hate to report my mother's name is not Angela or Owens, so I don't know. They're just putting stuff on the internet. And my mother quite literally never drank growing up. It used to be her thing to have one strawberry daiquiri on her birthday every year at Chili's. That's about the extent of drinking that my mother has done. Again, made up because the goal here is just to smear and libel me so that people don't actually look up the things that I've brought to the public sphere. Next up, this guy, Richard Hanania, who, by the way, entire article done about him having been a white supremacist. But let's see what he tweets, because now they're they're just throwing out anything. Richard tweets, Candace Owens' husband is George Farmer. He says they got engaged 17 days after meeting. Quote, nothing romantic was said at all, end quote, before that, and they never went on any dates. He says she just had a power. He talks like he was recruiting a kind of Frankenstein. Who is this guy? Oh, <laughs> I'm my husband's Frankenstein. And they kept up with that, by the way, but then they switched it. So at first he was controlling me. Now it got even worse here. They're going to say, and he's abusing me. This guy, Preston, says, Candace Owens is being abused by her husband who belongs to a fringe Nazi version of Catholicism. Hurt people hurt people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've read so many things about myself on the internet in the last 48 hours. None of them true, of course. They're even going after my father-in-law, that poor guy. I, I mean, I feel terrible. I mean, he's just has a different perspective and they're like demanding that he says what is his perspective is. Here's the thing. If you are so rabidly Zionist that you cannot accept that someone saying pedophilia is not okay, if you can accept that blanket statement and you instead attack the person who is bringing the facts to the table, you need to deeply re-examine yourself. Now to the, the neocon uh, media, the establishment who has been churning out all of these articles and all of these conspiracies second by second, I want you to know that you're doing a pretty good job of proving my point that Israel has too strong a hold on our media. All right, this is the reason why people don't listen to you anymore. This is the reason why when I do an X space, you have 1 million people listening live. While these sorts of numbers are not listening to your podcast, or not listening to your media anymore because people just want truth and they can hear truth. They know when they're listening to truth and they know when they're listening to lies. They, so when they're watching you in a panic, trying to convince them that I'm in some sort of uh, a panic or a manic episode, whatever it is that you're trying to sell, whatever psychoanalysis theory you're trying to present, they know that, okay, Candace must have said something that's very true. You know, in, in closing, I want to say this. I remember listening to uh, Vladimir Putin when he was being interviewed by Tucker, and towards the end of the interview, he sort of remarked on the fact that the world is moving. And America just wants to be up to the same old stuff that it's always been up to. And, you know, he's sort of referring to getting involved in wars, trying to pretend that they're keeping their hands clean and they're involved everywhere, trying to force people to be a part of, of the, the petrodollar when they're basically, they were using that to bully people. And he's just like, the world is moving on from this. And I would like to issue that same message to the media. You can't keep doing the same move all the time and expect the public to believe you, okay? You can't call every single person crazy and anti-Semitic. It just, it's, people don't find it to be fundamentally honest, okay? Eventually, you gotta get a little more creative. And I see you're trying here, alcohol, fetal syndrome. My mom's an alcoholic named Angela. I appreciate the effort, but it's so much more easy if you simply commit yourself to the truth. And that's what I'm doing. And people are responding to that. And that's why despite the media firestorm and all the craziness, we never got more signups to our local page than when we first began this process. And that's what I'll leave you guys with today. 
All right, guys, I do want to thank one of our advertisers, uh, Grand Canyon University. That is a private Christian university that's based in beautiful Phoenix. So now that you know that the reasons why she was banned, I just want to add to this med bill as well that what she mentioned there about the media and the lack of viewers as well, I think also this um, lack of viewership as well could have been the re could be a reason why we're going to see this legislation so that to protect the media because they don't have a lot of views. And even with a 16-year-old being banned, people who are less than 16 being banned to, to being on TikTok, on social media, that also could be the reason of just the viewers to promote viewership of the corporate media and whatever they put out there so that people can now conf don't have to listen to different views, uh, the different thought processes. I mean, you don't have to agree with everything that a person say for the person to listen to them, to give them the respect of them to be able to voice their thought processes. Um, I don't agree with everything that she talks about, but I would defend her right to actually be able to speak about her issues. And it should always be the same for everyone else. It shouldn't be just for people who are white and conservative, not people like her because she's a conservative and black. So it should be everyone else. So, I mean, I just, uh, yeah, it's just highlighted some of the hypocrisy. And you can see that with a lot of reporting that you see if you are somebody who listen really to just corporate media, you're missing out because you really going to miss out on other perspective. The reason why I knew Donald Trump was going to win was because I wasn't relying on the information that the corporate media was feeding uh, us. I was actually relying also on other views on social media and other people who were talking about what was going on on the ground in America. So they weren't catching up all of these sentiments. We're catching up the sentiments and the propaganda of who do we want really to win so that we can work with that person, not the, uh, not, not Donald Trump. But Donald Trump is actually a, is going, is a president-elect. So he's a president-elect, Donald Trump, and he was talking on Twitter that he wanted to actually asking his followers whether he want, they would like to see Candace Owen in his administration so imagine if Candice Owen becomes a uh, someone very important in Donald Trump's administration, the embarrassment of this government of banning her. They've already banned her visa. Are you gonna burn a American uh, official from coming to Australia? Is that what you <laughs> what's gonna happen? You see, um, it's hypocritical. It's a, it's hypocrisy of it all. It's like, yeah, I just wanted you guys to think about this thing, and especially when you're now looking at the territory of uh, curtailing people's opinions on social media and what they think about it, uh, you know, legitimate debate, not one that is hate speech, obviously, but one that actually has different people can bring up the facts of the things that they've read and they know about and they believe. I mean, it's up to her to believe certain things. I mean, not everyone is, 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 is going to believe her and you shouldn't be believing me anything that I say because it's opinion based on my experience and everything that I've read. So you really... <sighs> I mean, this whole thing of really having a a person who's going to be the factual individual, factual, a truthful person, the one who has all the knowledge, even the AI doesn't have all the knowledge. I mean, that, that thing is really smart, but it doesn't have all the knowledge. So who is it? Who is that actually a person that can tell us what is factual, what is misinformation what is actually disinformation what is it is misinformation today tomorrow would be the fact what is disinformation it can turn up to be another you know something else very important for somebody else and actually what is is misinformation for one person helpful for one person it could be actually a good thing for the other person. The other person can find some relief in actually listening to somebody who thinks like them 
and really think like, you know what, I'm not crazy. At least I've got someone that thinks like me and that person can feel empowered. And that for that person, it can be very empowering. What the other person thought, it was really helpful. The other person may feel, oh, this is great. You see, it's a slippery slope, you know. We're going to a slippery slope. Why are we ruining Australia with this stuff? I don't understand. So that's my opinion. As always, it's not facts. It's expressed by me, what I said. And you all guys can comment with your opinion, what you think. What's going on here? Obviously, I know that she's trying very hard to get her visa back and has got it. People have uh, put their submission. I've already done that as well. And they've already handed that to the parliament. So let's hold fingers crossed for her. Thank you guys for listening. Have a lovely day. Bye for now.